This week in moto from around the world, we've got new information on new motorcycles being released, series changes, along with drama happening at round one of the motocross nationals and top name individuals in the sport calling a spade a spade. I was wrong about Honda dropping new information on their e-bike. They actually dropped new information on their four stroke bikes, which is interesting because usually you have a new integration of 450 around every two two to four years and then the year after the 450 is released you have a new revamped 250 but because of KTM in their hierarchy their Bermuda Triangle of Gas Gas Husky and KTM starting with the factory editions the other manufacturers had no choice but to pony up and start making a factory edition motorcycle which I'm a big fan of I always buy the factory edition maybe because I'm bougie I don't know. Maybe it's because it makes me go faster. But Trey Kennard dropped an informational video on the new bikes. And here, let's view some of it. The mainframe is constructed of 70% new components. As a result, there's an 8% increase in torsional rigidity, improving overall stability. A 5% increase in torsional lateral rigidity. Basically, a all-new frame. This motorcycle, what I'm going to show, is possibly the reason as to why I might purchase a motorcycle sooner rather than later back to the rider the ProLink rear suspension system has a new linkage structure that increases rigidity by 11 percent allowing for smoother rear suspension action the leverage ratio has been adjusted to maintain a balanced feel even under braking in which is awesome because braking is one of those things where the suspension doesn't want to move because you're locking the wheels up when the wheels are free flowing that suspension likes to move and if you watch Stewart's analysis on bikes he's showing the difference between KTM that used to have no linkage whatsoever but the difference between Sexton's bike and Jet Lawrence and Hunter Lawrence's motorcycle it's just free flowing it looks as if that bike is moving so smooth underneath them Honda has this stuff figured out and they're ponying up and making it available to the masses. The shock is also easier to remove for service and adjustment, only requiring the removal of the side covers, muffler, and ECU. Which is huge. Oh my gosh, how many hours have we all spent trying to remove a rear shock and taking the swing arm off because that's really the easiest way to remove them? Oh, I, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. While retaining strong torque and power, the engine uses new selectable ECU maps that offer a smoother delivery while retaining strong torque and power throughout the rev range. A redesigned airbox has a more direct pathway for the airflow. Which is awesome. I want to thank the Austrian motorcycles for this design on the airbox. It's easy. It's quick. This right here still looks like it's a little bit difficult to change that air filter. Might have to have an extra couple bolts, but I digress. The experience on the track include a stainless steel Yoshimir exhaust. Oh yeah, this is talking about the factory edition. This would be the bike that I would buy. And here, here, I'll, I'll make a point once we hear it. Hand polished cylinder ports. Henson clutch basket and cover. Did you hear Kennard? He said Henson clutch basket and cover. How many times do we get a factory edition bike that has a recluse cover, but no internal components? I'm like, come on guys. These riders are hard on the clutch. You get little notches on them. I've been the guy that goes in there, files them down with a nice file so that I can get more life and longevity out of these things. Small note of Gas Gas, the Austrian manufacturers that have kind of moved their manufacturers to China, at least a little bit, they released some of their MC models, which is the two strokes. And the biggest thing that I see is a revised frame. It's better for corning and stability. Cool. New graphics, got it. New suspension setting. Okay, whatever. Things I do like is having an hour meter. Gas Gas usually hasn't been too keen on giving that stuff. It's more for the more expensive Husqvarna's and KTM's. Brake Tech brakes, ah, they're decent, but Brembo is by far better. Hydraulic clutch is awesome. So anyway, if you're looking for a more affordable, good 250, Gas Gas is one of the highest reliable motorcycles on the market. And moving to some of the drama, Listen to what Stewart had to say, what he had to say about the whole penalty deal between Vial coming off the track and then you also had Deegan going off the track three different times and Sexton going off the track and a bunch of privateers going off the track, but who's the one that got penalized? It's the <laughs> foreigner. <laughs> 
it's the best way I can put it, right? I'm not putting that out there as like, hey, look, it's because, you know, this is United States series, therefore we're only going to try to protect. No, it's just ironic is what I want to say. But here, let's listen to what Stewart had to say. Neither one of them should have been penalized. It's a hard spot to be in because if the rule's the rule. Yes, nobody should have been penalized. And things that we have to make note of is that this is not MX Sports. This is not Feld. This is not Super Motocross. This is not NBC. This is the AMA, the sanctioning body that is creating the penalties and rules and also enforcing what happens on and off the track. And we also had Ryan Villapoto and Ricky Carmichael on their Title 24. That one there to me, that was such a short stint of being off the track. But here's where it gets sticky is Tom went off once. Hayden went off three times. We have replay. Here he goes around the outside, jumps off the track right here. And look at the tire. Just on the gas. Now he lets up. Goes ripping around the outside, jumps off. Look at the rear tire. Throwing roost. And Aaron, let's run Tom's really quick. As he goes off the track, catches the side, gets on the gas. He goes too, though. I mean, he, yep. he, he, yep. he look, gasses he her up. Yep, he on. does gas Just it up. But that is why Tom got penalized. So my question is, is if you're going to be throwing penalties around, they need to be across the board the same. To me, this right here, what we're watching of Tom and what we're watching. 100%. Watched of Way to go, Villapoto and Carmichael, for making a spade a spade. There was another minute incident that happened during press day where unfortunately one of the title contenders or at least a podium finisher with march banks ends up going down because he ends up hitting riders of i believe that's mcelrath and jerry robin who are down in a blind spot Ooh, and this was just a bad pileup. And MX Sports said that the flagger was not there because he was moving to a PA announcement. So that is a problem. I've spoken with some teams and found out that they have talked to the promoters, especially there at Fox Raceway, and they plan on making sure that this doesn't happen again. Yes, it's a little bit unfortunate that we have to focus on changing stuff rather than prevention but moving forward this is a precedent to the rest of the series and rest of the promoters that hey this is something that could have been avoidable talking about my other favorite form of racing moto gp you've got espargo announcing his retirement and after announcing that he goes out and wins the sprint race there on saturday and then he ends up finishing fourth at the actual moto gp the the one that creates that has the most value the most points it's cool that they're doing two different races on the weekend and the thing that i'm most impressed with is mark marquez yet again like what he did at the last round goes from this time 14th to third rather than 13th to third freaking amazing ride and I have to give it up to Acosta as well. We have a rider that is in his rookie season and is showing on a KTM that he's able to fight forward and race up front and compete for wins, which is really spectacular. Yes, we all know about all the rule changes that are happening here in the next few years for MotoGP, but there's lots of stuff going on. And Ducati is still owning the podium with Martin and Marquez and Bagnaya. Very interesting stuff, which makes me wonder next year when the Ducati is released here in America, how well that is going to go and which riders are going to be on that team. You know that they are going to spare no expense by getting top-notch talent to win a championship. The MXGP World Championship switching, getting rid of um, some Bobwe, and it's being replaced by the Lombard round here in the end of June and July. So I wonder really what went down there that they had to remove one of those rounds as well. It, it's hard to work with the governing bodies and political systems when you're going to different countries. Also, you've got the 2025 Super Enduro World Championship calendar, which is going to have seven races that start in December that was released. And Billy Bolt was the champion there in 2024, and he's going to try to defend that come December. He has one of his home rounds, I believe, at round three. So we'll look to that. And in Super Enduro this weekend in Pennsylvania, there is a combined purse of $50,000 at the Keystone Challenge, which is pretty cool. But just in comparison, the Motocross Nationals have around a $100,000 purse. And we know that that's not 
that big when you're spreading it over 80 riders so that it's $250 per moto if you're inside that top 40. The real purse doesn't start getting better until you're inside literally the top 10 because winning one of those nationals I believe is around seven-ish thousand dollars where a supercross is around 15 but we do have the influx of new money for the super motocross stuff that has that added 500,000 and million dollar bonus for the winners. I found this also interesting that Shanning Tatum and Brad Pitt are actually having their own production companies do a docu-series for the Isle of Man, which is that crazy race that I would love to see guys of the likes of Marquez go race, but the chance of them dying is speculative, I would say, <laughs> because there is no area for, there's, there's no room for error. They're either on the track or off the track at 300 kilometers an hour. We just went over all the news from around the world. If this is at all adds value, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button and notification icon helps the channel. My goal is to get to 60,000 by the end of summer. I appreciate every single one of you. Till next time, keep it WFO.